The following program is made possible by generous gifts from partners of Benningham Ministries and viewers like you in this area. Today, Pastor Benny Hinn concludes his intriguing teaching series on the three revelations of faith with an in-depth examination of the measure of faith. Unlike the fruit of faith and the gift of faith, the measure can be developed and grown as we study the Word of God and begin to recognize Jesus in every book of the Bible. Now, let's join the audience at Pastor Benny's regular Monday night service in California as he concludes this important message with a revelation of seven destinations the measure of faith will take you as it is developed in your life. The measure of faith is, 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 is my responsibility. The fruit of faith is God's responsibility. The gift of faith comes when the anointing of God is flowing through my life, touching people's lives. But I'm dealing now with the measure. We've got to stay with the measure. Let's focus on my responsibility. This is where I cooperate with God. This is my daily living. This is Hebrews 11 that I'm in right now. This faith, has three worlds in itself. It has little faith. It has great faith. And when it's complete, it's perfect faith. Little faith is found in Matthew 8, 23 through 26. O ye of little faith, Jesus said to his disciples. But as you develop that measure, you'll go into the world of great faith. Lord, speak the word. That's Matthew 8, 5 through 10. But then James 2, 21, 22 says, perfect faith. There is a place where that faith is perfected. As I continue the process of attending, looking, protecting. If I continue the process of Proverbs chapter 4, 20 through 23. As I continue that process, I'm perfecting that measure. Because that measure is being, is being developed. Paul talked about how your faith groweth. In, 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 in Romans chapter 4, the Bible tells us that this faith grows. Oh, this is awesome. In verse 20, it says, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Strong in faith means faith that's being strengthened as it grows. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says that this faith can be exorcised. It can develop and grow. It says, I read for you, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or proper, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, he said. This faith that is growing faith, called the measure of faith, is mentioned in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It's growing faith. But it demands my cooperation. When faith begins to grow, it is the exercise of the heart. Romans 10.10, 10, 
with the heart man believeth. It's, it's, a, it's a process of believing. It's a process of developing. All right, I'll give you an example. This morning I got up and I opened the scriptures and I read Genesis. And I focused on what I was reading. And I was not reading Genesis so I can teach tonight. I was reading Genesis so I continue the process I began 40 years ago. I began reading the Bible 40 years ago. I'm still doing it. I finished reading the scripture about, or the whole Bible, about two weeks ago. I'm already almost done with the book of Genesis in two weeks. But rushing is not smart. I want to retain. I want to maintain. I want to grow. I want to develop. I'm asking questions I did not, I did not ask last year about the book of Genesis. I discovered that Genesis has three beginnings, not one. Three beginnings. It's the book of beginnings. It's the book of three beginnings. Adam, Noah, and Abraham. Three beginnings. With Adam, one beginning. With Noah, second beginning. With, with Abraham, third beginning. The first 11 chapters, historical. With much prophecy in them. But when I get to chapter 11, it's all about one man and one family that found God named Abraham. So God deals with the nations from 1 to 11 and with one man from there on. Focuses on one man through whom Jesus comes. So the whole reason for 11 chapters is to lead me to Abraham, the father of the Messiah. Till I get there. When I get to Abraham, I'm in a new world. I'm in the third beginning of the, Bible, uh, of the book of Genesis. And on that third beginning is the whole Bible. So God goes from Adam to Noah to Abraham who became the father of Israel. And from Abraham to the end of the Bible, it's all about Israel. Israel is not mentioned in Genesis 1 through 11. It's Adam. It's his two sons. It's Cain killing Abel. It's Seth coming, replacing the one he was, that was killed, replacing Abel. Then men begin to multiply on the face of the earth till the flood. God chooses one man out of that whole globe out of the whole world the seed of the messiah is in him he's saved for one reason he's carrying the promised messiah everything in the from genesis 1 to 11 has nothing to do with the nation of israel they're not even mentioned abraham god chose him god chose him before abraham knew him Abraham's father and family worshipped idols. God appeared unto him. Identified with him and said, I'm the God of Abraham from now on. Come out of thy country, out of thy kindred. He left, but because he was so controlled by his dad, he could not go to the promised land yet till his father died. So they go from Ur, right north of the Persian Gulf, present day Iraq, southern Iraq, all the way to Mesopotamia, which is Syria today, north, and has to live there in Aran with his father, who went to Aaron to sell idols. He was an idol worshiper. Then he comes south to the Holy Land and pitches his tent. And the Bible tells me something amazing. The man of faith tells God, I, you know, I'm not interested in having another son. 
I have one. I love him. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac will the Messiah be called. Not Ishmael. Because Ishmael is the son of the flesh. I reject him. And God waits till Abraham's body was dead. A hundred years old. He's dead. Can't produce. When God saw that the body is dead and Abraham couldn't do it, he said, now I'll do it. The son of the spirit was born by the spirit. Sarah was 90 years old when she had Isaac. And from there on, you see the relationship between the father and the son. It's mind boggling. I see Isaac carrying the wood. That's Jesus carrying the cross. <gasps> Going towards the mountains of Moriah, towards Golgotha. I don't see an Isaac with wood. I see Jesus with the cross. Don't you feel the anointing when I'm talking about it? It just thrills my soul, William. You read that and everything in you becomes a roar of the spirit well how can you stay weak in the faith dear God after I read this I want, I want to go lay hands on people <laughs> I was somebody walk into my bedroom when I'm reading just to lay hands on them because I get all stirred up and I want to just bless somebody but nobody's there <laughs> so I bless myself I've been doing this for the last few days, and my faith has been so stirred, I start crying opening the Bible. I promise you, this, this morning, I couldn't see through the tears. I'm not interested in Abraham. I read about this for the last 40 years of my life. I know there was Abraham. I know there was Isaac. I know, I know it all. I want to know more about Jesus. Not about Isaac, not about Abraham, not even about Rebecca. There's so much in this Bible. Now, as that faith begins to grow, something begins to happen. For it says unto, there's a destination here. Unto what? Well, seven destinations of faith. Here they are. Write, write them down. This is what the measure will give you. This is what it will take you. Number one, unto salvation. Ephesians 2.8. By grace are ye saved through faith. The first destination God brings you into is salvation. And when I say salvation, I don't mean saved from sin. When I say salvation, I mean the life of faith. Full salvation. Sozo is the Greek word. Sozo means complete wholeness of spirit, soul, and body. Faith brings you to that destination. 1 Peter 1.5 is the second destination. Put it on the, on, on the screen, please. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5 Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Kept by the power of God unto what? Unto security in the Spirit. You cannot lose your salvation then if you continue in that process. There's a place of protection. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Remember that Unto, he said, unto, Romans 10, 10. Well, there's a destination then when it says unto. My second destination of faith is my security in that faith. I cannot lose my place in Christ. I must continue in that faith. It's up to me. I can decide to shut it all down tomorrow. And I'll be judged for it. And I'll go backwards. 
But as I continue in the process of Proverbs 4, 20 and on, I continue building that life God has required me to build in the Spirit. Number three, a third destination is Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Answered prayer. Let's read it. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. That's my third destination of faith. A place where my prayer is answered. My prayer cannot be answered unless there's security in that faith. And there can be no security in that faith unless I experience full salvation of faith. I know I'm saying some deep things, but you need to have some deep things. It's time you quit drinking skim milk. Destination number four is James 5, 14, 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You come into that place, your fourth destination is healing. You begin to experience healing for the whole body and your soul. I know you're not there yet, but you're going to get there. I'm giving you information tonight that you're going to chew on for a long time. Destination number five is 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, is the fifth destination of the process called the measure of faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So therefore, the fifth destination is a daily strong walk. I'm walking daily, and I'm strong as I'm walking daily with the Lord. Because the process brings me. The process brings me into salvation, into security, into, into answer prayer, into healing, and a daily strong walk in God. Number six is 1 John 5, 4. Faith is the victory. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. That's my sixth destination. I walk in victory as the process continues. And number seven, and finally for tonight, is Acts 15, verse 9. Acts 15, verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, meaning Jews and Gentiles, purifying their hearts by faith. I come into a place of complete holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word of the Lord declares, let the Word of Christ dwell richly within you. When the Word of God begins to fill your heart and life, everything changes. Your life begins to change. The presence of God becomes real in your life again. The power of God is awesome. Why? Because His Word is the key. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Why? They are life, life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. So think about it. The Word of God changes your heart, your life, and even quickens your body. So I know you heard a teaching today on faith. And I pray that faith in God will be reality in your life every single day. Now let's pray. Let's, let's believe God to meet all your needs today. And Jesus said in Matthew 21, 21, all things are possible with he that believes. Nothing is impossible with God. All you have to do is trust him. Simply rely on him. Have confidence in him. That's right. And this is the confidence we have. If we ask according to His will, He'll do it. All you have to do is just rest in His promise. He'll never, ever walk away from you. We are the ones who walk away. He never walks away. He will keep you as the apple of the eye and hide you under the shadow of His wings because He loves you. Now, dear Jesus, you are so wonderful. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your mercy. 
that we still do not understand and we may never understand till we see you but we thank you for it who can really understand your mercy lord who can understand your love and grace it's impossible to fully comprehend it because it's bigger than us and bigger than our faith and bigger than our prayer but we thank you for your mercy that keeps us safe and secure and because of your mercy i pray today meet every need in that life meet every need in the life of the one watching this program today lord heal that body remove that sickness and pain i rebuke that sickness in jesus mighty and glorious name somebody with a tumor under your left arm god has just healed you like that thank you jesus arthritis in the lower back is being healed an ear infection in the right ear is being healed a heart condition is being healed i rebuke it in jesus name cancer stomach cancer i rebuke it in the name of jesus lord heal your people wrap your arms lovingly around them let them know your tender love and care in jesus name amen don't you love it they know it's so precious the greatest miracle is salvation if you don't know the lord just say dear jesus i need you come into my heart and save my soul today i want to be yours forever wash me with your blood and make me whole amen you know he's so precious i just came back from pensacola florida I had a great 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 time they will show it to you or parts of it next week we'll be showing you what god did in the uk and in in the ukraine ah london was awesome and and the ukraine the power of god that flowed well, just magnificent. Thank you for being my partner and friend. And if you're not a partner, join and become a partner today. Help me take the gospel to the world. Listen, I'm traveling everywhere. I'm going to four countries in Africa this July. And then in August, I'm going to Holland, England, France, Spain, on and on and on. I'm traveling more than ever. I mean, every month, you know, and, and I, I'm loving it worldwide and we'll be showing you that next week. So thank you for your partnership and you're helping me with children and orphans and the homeless around the world. We still have many who are we, we are supporting 45,000 kids around the world. Plus, uh, you know, just the need around the world. So great. Help me help them. Thank you. So become a partner today by calling the number on the screen. I've sent you a letter make sure to read it and then there's a card in it send it back to me with your prayer request and declare that this is the greatest season of your life and i'm going to anoint it with oil send it back to you as a point of contact so you'll you will believe look i'm believing with you that a prosperity anointing will descend on your life and bring you out, out of debt god has promised power that'll come on your life that'll, that'll bring you out, out of debt debt is not god's will he wants to bless you. Make sure to read it. Also, the Dig Bible, many of you are, are calling, and we have it in the warehouse. I'm amazed how many of you are still calling for the Dig Bible, really. We have 3,000 in the warehouse, ready to go. The second your order comes in, from the time the, the order gets in, 24 hours later, it'll be shipped to you from our warehouse. For $100, get this Bible. Leather, large print, it's incredible. The greatest Bible on earth is the Dick Bible. Listen, everything you want to know about God's Word is in here. It's a dictionary, it's a commentary, there's a massive index in the back. Every subject you can imagine, everything about the Greek, everything about the Hebrew, all the doctrines of Scripture, everything. There's, there's nothing left out. It took Philly Dick 30 years to work on this Bible. This is the result of 30, 30, 30 years of work and it's yours you'll not need another book to read beside this believe me because it'll change your life for a gift of a hundred dollars get this today and don't forget for any gift i want to send you my teaching these are monthly teachings i'm sending you now and all you have to do is call the five keys to total recovery this will show you how to recover everything you lost it's from scripture straight from the bible first samuel 30 get this i beg of you to get this because it's for you for any gift and if you don't have the money i'll send it to you still 
just call the number on the screen. It's a powerful Bible teaching, and I'll be sending you one, a, a different one every month. And uh, Rabbi Daniel Lepin was with me a few days ago. You got to get this amazing two CDs called The Gathering Storm. Here's why. Listen to what he says. I'll come back. What God has given us is a blueprint for surviving the deluge, a blueprint for making sure that you and your family can get through the flood, the cataclysm, whatever is coming down the road, you need to be able to construct a haven of security and a refuge for escape where necessary. And it's all in here. So the, It's the several coming... hours of audio CD. And the reason that people have to have it on audio CD, if I may say, is it's terribly important to have repetition. You've got to be able to go through it again and again so as that it moves from here to here because so, action flows from the heart. This will help people yes. prepare for the future, really. What I bring are uh, God's secrets that are embedded in his language, embedded in the text. And I understand, of course, that, that people don't understand Hebrew. So our job is to make it possible for people to look in a Bible themselves and see exactly what we're talking about. All the magic that transforms this from a story of thousands of years ago into tomorrow's headlines, a blueprint for your own survival. Imagine by learning the numerical value of the Hebrew alphabet from scripture, you can actually build an ark of safety. I mean, this is amazing. Old Jewish wisdom, make sure to get this today. I don't know that we'll, be, we'll keep offering it for too long. Get this, if you have not gotten it, please do. This is fascinating. I promise you, you'll be able to build an ark of safety for your life by getting this today for a gift of $30 to the ministry. And I'm going to the Holy Land this November. Come with me and you can download our brochure right from our, from our homepage. So get it today and we'll be in New York the end of May. This is May 24, 25 at the United Palace for the powerful crusade. A whole lot more than us will tell you. Love you. And again, thanks for being my partner. You are the greatest. I mean it. You are the best. Love you. Bye-bye. Pastor Benny Hinn's next Miracle Crusade will be in New York City at the United Palace on May 24th and 25th with services at 7 p.m. on Thursday and 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Friday. And on Saturday, May 26th at 7 p.m., he'll conduct one great miracle service at the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland. On June 7th, 8th, and 9th, he'll visit Kansas City, Missouri for a crusade at the Harvest Church International, followed by a crusade in Pittsburgh on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. And Pastor Benny invites you to join him on a life-changing tour of the Holy Land, November 7th through 15th. Experience the sights and sounds of Israel as you walk where Jesus walked in Jerusalem and Galilee. You can call today to request a brochure or download one from the ministry website. For information on all of Pastor Benny's crusades and services around the world, call now or visit the ministry website.